So I had to stay at the airport like all night. Um, <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back. Woo. <sighs> another day, another video. I hope you all enjoyed episode two and got all the info and the dates about preparation for coming to France. Um, so we go straight on into today's topic, which is So I took a direct flight from Nairobi to Paris which was about eight and a half hours and it was good. It was my first time on a flight. First time out of Kenya, first time in Europe, first time in France, first time in Paris. So um, I was headed to, from Paris, I was headed to Okay, so for me, just like most of the assistants, I landed at Charles de Gaulle which is CDG airport in Paris. So I had taken a day flight. Um, that meant I got to Paris at around um, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. in the evening, which um, now that I know better, I wouldn't um, advise someone to take a day flight if it's your first time going to a foreign country. Um, it's advisable to take a night flight so that when you get to the other country, it's during the day, like you don't have to be stranded or struggle so much. From Paris, I needed to go to Le Havre. It's a city in Normandy where I was posted. So I use Lufthansa Airlines, um, which means I flew from Nairobi to Germany, Frankfurt Airport to be specific. That took nine hours and then I was in Frankfurt for three hours and then I took a flight to Headed to. I landed in Geneva and I was headed to Chambéry. That was way easier for me than landing in Paris, which most people did, but there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, Geneva was perfect for me since it was like, it's like two hours away, two hours at most by road uh, to where I'm staying. So that just made more sense to me. So, um, unfortunately, I couldn't go that night because, um, you see, when you come, you have to book your transport from Paris to your city in advance. So I tried checking online, but there was a public transport strike. So I couldn't get a train from Paris to my city. The only means of transport I got was a bus. Uh, the cheapest bus you can take um, in France for me is flix bus so if you really want to travel and you don't want to take the train buses are cheaper and flix bus is even the best so i had booked a flix bus for the next day in the morning since i couldn't find any train and any bus at night and i was going to um saint etienne fermini which is like an hour an hour and a half outside of lyon so i ended up taking two trains to saint etienne i took a train from the airport to lyon center and then a train from the lyon center to saint etienne as soon as we landed we found his prof referent who was going to take us to Annecy. Annecy is a is another small city near chambéry and also equally near um, also equally near Geneva. So that's how I traveled. I traveled with them. She picked us from the airport, uh, took us to, she picked us from the airport and took us to Ansi. And then in Ansi, I met my prof referent and then she took me to where I, she took me to where I, where I stayed then. I took a trip from Paris to Tours, which was also direct. 
was about an hour and a half and I, it was basically my first time also on a trip Anyway, this is the first time for everything. So, um, I took a train from Paris to Tours, which was one and a half hours. And when I arrived, my host family, uh, my host mom, to be specific, picked me up from the Gare de Tours and drove me home. So I was lucky to get a host family in Tours that I've been living with, who are My travel was actually quite smooth other than one thing uh, my flight was I think at it was at the wee hours of the night if <laughs> well and cheap cheap flights are found on the wee hours of the night so I don't know what time it was I don't know what time it was like at 1 I left Nairobi at 1 um, my flight was was landing fast in Egypt and then from Egypt is when we took another flight to now Switzerland, Geneva. So yes, um, my f so my flight was quite smooth. Um, everything was nice about the flight. I had my friends and family come and wish me like good luck and everything. I had quite a number of friends at the airport, which was really really sweet. Um, I took. I took the plane. Um, it was my first time being traveling alone, so checking in and everything was not too bad. Um, what else? Given that I was with someone else, so when we landed in Egypt, <laughs> our flight, uh, the, the the exchange between the the I don't know the time between the two flights was how long? Was like um an hour so me i thought ah oh, we have a lot of time we can you know just get there and just walk hey so now by the time we were getting there the flight was a bit late i don't know why the flight was late by the way you guys i have no idea why the flight was late so as soon as we got there um that we could hear like now they are them calling for the next flight to now Switzerland. Guys, for flights for, for Switzerland, your plane is about to leave and we've just landed. Wow. So we were now with our luggages. Okay, but okay, I, may I just had a backpack and I think he also had a backpack. So we're just sh 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 running through the airport. Hey, hey, hey. We made that hustle. Uh uh. Uko we, we were running, we were running. That time, you know, we have to really be keen and, and follow on the on the because this is our this is my first time and I think also his first time in an airport in Egypt. So you said you know where you're going. Hey, so you're just running, we're checking everything, you're checking the Sidri terminal, the gates, Sidri the what? Oh la la. That was crazy. We just in gear like this we're playing like this. Like this, like this, like this. We got the play like this and it was leaving. Hey, and that was the first time. The first time I felt black. <laughs> Why? Because when I entered the plane, oh, white. As I was just like, wow, wow, I'm going to a white country. Because I think there was just me and he that were black and like, to other black people, I don't, and I'm doubting those two other black people because I was just like, <gasps> you know, I entered the flight and I was just like, where me home is that? <laughs> yeah, so arrival was perfect, we arrived on time, however, you know <laughs> that both of us did not have any SIM card, so whoever picking us was getting getting to talk to the person who was picking us was quite a hassle so uh, i don't know what you can do about that but i don't know have something concrete like have decided on a place where you meet or sh or here if you're meeting someone on the airport decide on a particular place and let them refer you because they know better because then we didn't know where we were going to meet we, we have no internet 
we have we can't actually call the person hey, it was a bit crazy that was the most hectic part finding the person who was coming to pick us and even with the description it was such a hassle so we were just zero nine zero nine so one advice i can give you if you're meeting someone um at least give them the the description of what you're going to be wearing one uh to let them tell you a place an exact place where you can meet for example like uh they can they can go and check if they already know the airport which would be perfect i think they would already know the airport where you're landing they can go and check where like a place a particular spot where you can go immediately you land yeah that would be perfect <clears throat> Um the one thing that went bad about about um our travel was receiving our luggage. <laughs> so you guys to me fika oh oh we sit well <laughs> to me right to me land we are ready to you know be all in that. Hey we go up you know of course immediately when you land you look for your luggage. Yeah, so to my Africa, we were looking for our luggage to couple for your belts to my Angalia. We're just looking at it. We're looking, expecting our luggage, down CC, just like, hey, you know, to get, we get to be to get it, to get it, it was empty, nothing. When I don't see my suitcase, he will die and see his. Ah, yeah. Uh, we go to another one, we continue checking. And then we're just realizing, I is a bit as if we we stood there for like I don't know 30 minutes waiting for our luggage. Everyone is just coming, taking their stuff. Shisha sha 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 sisi to apo to kingonja. Like eh yo Moko Hello luggage where ya Eh Moko Hey Dash Anyway so we didn't get our luggage Um and we went to complain at the baggage claim. So we're in Switzerland, everyone is speaking French, but luckily, everyone, luckily, I don't know how that lady knew, she just started speaking to us in English. So, hey, I'm sorry, because explaining that my luggage is lost in French, <laughs> dash, negative. Yeah, so they gave us some papers and we had to wait. So when we left the airport, we, we left without anything. The only things I had was in my backpack. <laughs> and I remember the only things I had in my backpack were some pedagogy items, like some small items to help in teaching. Adira that my best friend gifted me um, when I was coming. Shout out to you, Aileen. Uh, that Adira saved my life. What else did I have? That was that was basically uh, a few things here and there, but that they were not essential. Like I didn't have like a towel, I didn't have innerwear. I just had the dira and yes, a hoodie. And the hoodie, yes, a dira and a hoodie. That was all I had. So uh, as I advise you, as you come, as if I, if you haven't watched the previous video, I give the, I gave the same exact advice. Please carry uh like for example two pairs of clothes two extra pa pairs of clothes a pair of pajamas an extra pair of ignawares just in case a towel a small extra towel some toiletries in your in your carry-on bag just in case your luggage does not arrive on that same day so for me since i didn't have anything i had to go and shop and buy stuff and you're buying new stuff in Europe so I spent almost uh, 50 euros 50 euros is like 5k buying new stuff uh, like in our some t-shirts some jeans so that I could at least you know have some clothes to wear before my luggage arrived um, yes so that's my advice make sure you carry um things that you can wear essential things that you can wear for at least three days just in case your luggage does not arrive on time one more thing uh when you buy things in case your luggage has not arrived on time uh make sure you keep the receipts because apparently the airline is supposed to refund you but i unfortunately did not know that before so i just like threw the receipt 
but yeah keep the receipt and yeah um, so i immigrated in germany and guys for the immigration process let me just tell you i was behind a woman she was an arabic woman who never spoke any english and these germans were mean they were asking her for so many documents that i didn't even think you needed so i'm just there like panicking like scrolling through my phone trying to look for everything i need um because i didn't think you needed such things in an airport and they weren't understanding each other and they were literally being so mean to this woman i was my heart was just like bah, bah, bah. so like my advice would be when you're traveling carry your head denomination have the number of someone there or your pof hefe home whoever you're speaking to here because it can get you someone who can vouch for you someone who knows who you are so they can be like yes i know them they're coming here don't worry about it in the end i didn't need them and i don't know why they were harassing that woman probably because she didn't speak english um or german but yeah just have those contacts and have your documents like ready like somewhere near you i didn't need them but you never know you know race is it um okay so yeah so i flew from liam nairobi to frankfurt frankfurt to lyon the problem is that day i was so stressed um i had two huge suitcases huge and i had to carry them onto two trains which was so hectic luckily there were really nice people on the way who helped me so it wasn't that bad it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be but it was hectic carrying the two suitcases on the train and later i found out that there's a bus that goes straight from the airport to saint etienne so do your research find out if there's like an easier way to travel because i could have easily avoided the hassle of taking the two trains by just taking one bus i would have just gotten on the bus and come here no changing straight that was that would have been easier another thing that was stressing me was that i didn't know who was speaking me at the train station because my professor she was always like you know don't worry don't worry she had even spoken to my mom she's like don't worry about it you just come someone will be there and i didn't know who th i didn't know this woman okay i knew her because i'd been talking to her but really i don't know her i don't know what kind of a person she is maybe she just telling me don't worry and then she won't even be there she just kept telling me don't worry and i would ask her is it you coming she's like no but don't worry we don't know who will come for you yet but don't worry so i was so stressed i was like i have no idea where i'm going once i reached this train station i was just i put it in god's hands and i said you know what whatever happens happens Luckily enough by the time I reached the train station the principal of the school was already there waiting for me and I was like hallelujah um so yeah she picked me up and she took me to the school yes my travel was smooth from Nairobi to Paris from Paris to Tours I did not have any challenges I basically it was wonderful like i don't know um i've 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 heard the stories from other assistants that getting to their destination was quite a challenge and i felt really sorry for them but i really thank god i thank god honestly that my travel from nairobi to paris was smooth and I was just a little bit nervous, I have to say. Um unfortunately I'd lost my phone the previous night in Nairobi like so tragic, right? So um I had to travel with um a really cheap phone which was not even convenient and um my tablet which went off before I even got halfway the journey. So I was in an airport no no phone no tablet so i i, I went and asked um, the security guard um no the security guard the police actually i think they were the police so i asked them for um a place like a waiting room where i could stay because at that time i couldn't even reserve a hotel room if i wanted to i didn't have a phone i didn't have means couldn't find a place to charge my gadgets like it was messed up so i asked the guard for a waiting room to sit and um i don't know what happens there's something interesting that happens when someone speaks to you in french 
for the first time and they're speaking so fast your french disappears yani inapotea yani you just left there like repete s'il vous plaît like it's so inapotea your brain cells forsake you at that time so i think um after i couldn't get what he was saying within the first 30 seconds he was like you know what girl you need to show me your documents so he asked for the um appointment letter the one you're given when you get um appointed for this language assistant program so i i get the documents and show him and then he realizes okay this is legal so he allows me in in the waiting room and shows me where to sit So that means if you're traveling make sure your documents everything you need your pass okay of course you'll have your passport <laughs> your um appointment letter like every document you need make sure it's in your carry on bag don't put it in your suitcase or in your big bags you don't want to be rummaging through your stuff um when someone asks you for a document so make sure they are in one in one of your carry on bags so anyway I get to the waiting room and sit there and um luckily I had traveled on the same flight with one of the assistants from Kenya so he comes and we sit there all night and wait for the next day So um the next day in the morning I was supposed to go to Loav um so um I take um in 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 the airport they have free shuttles so to get from one terminal to another you have free shuttle so you just get on the shuttle um reach your terminal and um you get off and go get your train or bus so I get into the shuttle um get to the terminal where my bus is at um I I ask for directions to the specific bus because i didn't know the everyone like everyone is so kind in paris especially if you try to speak in french so they show me the bus and when i get to the bus it's such a relief but then i'm still worried because my phones are off and i need to someone needs to pick me when i get to my destination but anyway um the journey was quite peaceful i really had a peaceful time So during the entire journey from Paris to Le Havre I was just seated and so tired and that's when you get your first glimpse of the Eiffel Tower which is really exciting anyway so I got to Le Havre after about um um 3 hours it's I think 3 hours exactly 3 hours by bus so I get there and when I get to the bus station Now I panic because I can't communicate. I just have to stand there and hope that the person I had informed to pick me from the bus stop will be there on time because now I can't communicate. So, um luckily I think French people are really punctual, which is something <laughs> um you will discover. So you have to make sure you're always on time for buses, always on time for work. because people really keep time if you're supposed to meet someone at 2 to 2:15 they'll be there at 2:15 so anyway um my host comes to pick me from the station and i feel really relieved because now i'm not stranded uh, and then we go home yes um i stayed at my host family's house and that's where i've been staying for the whole period that i've been working as a teaching assistant and they're a lovely family um if there is anybody really considering choosing staying with the host family i would advise because it kind of helps you to manage the cost costs of living in france because it's Uh, when we get home um i'm i'm supposed to be staying with their family it's like a, f- a family of three 
Um, so I'm staying together with them in the same house, which is really nice because I got to have like company and I'm never alone. It was really quite cool. Well, I had been looking for housing for a while. Oh, I looked for housing and I didn't know, I wasn't really sure where I was going to stay. So some of the things I thought I'd do would be couch surfing or something like that. And eventually when I got in touch with my prof for haunt, like the teacher who was in charge of me, she told me I could stay at her place for a week or two until I find somewhere to stay. So yes, she housed me and it was amazing. Uh, my experience was different from other people. Some people's pro, some people's prof Kefon Hans did not house them. Some people already had housing before they reached. Some people got Airbnbs. So it depends. So for me, I was very lucky. My prof um, agreed to house me, which was amazing for me. So as soon as I met with her, I was just going to her house. And from there is when I actually found to, I actually managed to look for my own housing and somewhere else to stay. I don't think I had um, high expectations. Before I came, I had lowered my expectations. So I don't think I was, like, I, I got uh, my expectations disappointed. I, I didn't get disappointed at all. Everything was fine. Everything was okay. My reality check moment was when um, I realized that my, my host family speaks French, totally French, which is quite a struggle within like the first month. Any, they speak so fast and your French can't match their French. So it was quite challenging because now I was quickly discovering that I need to speak French. They won't understand me if I don't speak French. So I had to catch up quite fast, which was a good thing. But at the moment it was quite stressful because I, I was just there like, at some point I, I kept saying we oui to everything. <laughs> like they ask you something and you're like, we, 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 merci, we. <laughs> like it was really that bad. One reality check was the cost of living here. When I came, I thought, hey, I'd be a ball, I'd have, like, chums, like, hey, you know, be like that, be like that, be like that. But hey, mm -mm, nah. Um, the salary is a good salary, but it's not rich man, rich man shenanigans over here. Mm -mm. It just didn't occur to me that I'd be that alone. Like I was alone, so low. That was one big reality check. Be alone. It's your decisions. It's you who makes the decisions for yourself. Even if you get to speak to someone, they can only advise, but you are the one who makes the decision. So that. it's not easy to get you know like French friends and things like that and I read that 100% chance you're going to have foreigners as friends and that is exactly what happened to me maybe because I already had it in my mind but then I also met a French person who told me this that most likely foreigners just mean foreigners and it takes a long time you have to live here for a long time for you to have French friends or if you do then you're really lucky so, great guys so that's the end of today's episode thank you so much for tuning in and watching and liking and subscribing for those who subscribed if you haven't boo girl boy what you doing <laughs> what what subscribe um yeah um See you soon for episode four, four, four. If you don't already know, episode four will be out on Friday. So watch out, watch out for that. Watch out for that. And I'll see you then.
Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah.